All right, we're officially launching Arizona to Edmonton. I'm your host, Tracy Gray, and with me, uh, well, actually not with me, they're the ones doing the show. This is Devin Gray, professional real estate agent in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And then down in the States, we've got Diane Brennan, professional real estate agent. And uh, these two are gonna hash it out between the differences when you're investing in Canada and in the States, and then specifically those areas. Last week was supposed to be the official launch, but we had some technical difficulties, so we're calling that show the pre-show. <laughs> this is officially episode number one. And uh, it was kind of ironic because in that video, part of the technical difficulties we had was Diane's camera kept freezing, but in Edmonton right now, we're the ones in freezing temperatures. So there was a definite irony there, Diane, that uh, you were the one that was freezing in the video. Yeah. So if you really want to see some lovely pictures of me, uh, <laughs> it's on YouTube where I'm frozen <laughs> for how long? Half of the 30 minutes? I don't know. Yeah, Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. 10 to yeah. 10, well, for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. So poor Devin and Tracy, we when we recorded it, they didn't record. So it's just 30 minutes of me. It's horrible. My mom loves it. My mom loves it. <laughs> oh, good. Well, at least we yeah. got one subscriber. Yeah. Just that's, that's right. thinks there's something she, she yeah. thinks there's something medically wrong with me. But <laughs> she doesn't really understand the technology. Why are you like this the whole time? But anyway. She doesn't know it's the video. She thinks it's just you actually froze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's wrong? You're not feeling right? wrong. Diane, you're such a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, you guys are in freezing Edmonton. I just got back from Puerto Vallarta. So I have a friend from Edmonton visiting and we just moved her suitcases out of my office here to do the wow. video and stuff. Yeah. So she's enjoying the nice temperatures. Excellent. But you guys had 19 degrees yesterday, didn't you? Or something? It was beautiful. Yeah, it was. Sun was shining. Gorgeous. Yeah. So when you're here, you want it to suck at home in Edmonton to make, That's you know, that, yes. to make it worth it. She's so disappointed when she looked at her phone. She's like, it's 19 degrees at home. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Cause you do that little victory text that you send everyone where you screenshot what the temperature is in Phoenix yeah. and send that home to torture everybody who's back in the minus temperatures. That's, that's part of the fun when and you're I'm, in Edmonton going on holiday. <laughs> and I'm so much of a jerk. I used to, uh, Oh, look at there. I'm frozen. <laughs> <clears throat> well, and that's we're not really freezing today. We started out at zero degrees. And it's supposed to warm up a little bit, but really windy today. So it's that's very not windy, fun. Yeah. Oh, well, it yeah. is going to be uh, 30, over 30 degrees today. And oh, wow. I would uh, put my hand in the pool and swash it around. That's how much of a jerk I am usually. I'm like, yeah, it's not bad here. <laughs> so screenshot the temperature yeah. on your phone and send that to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I'll do Thank that. you for not doing it, doing this show poolside today. I that's right. That. Yeah. yeah, lucky you. <laughs> That it froze out of you in a bikini. Yeah, if it froze, I would have died. Let me tell you. <laughs> I was doing a lot of cropping. You know, you eat on holiday. And I ate all before, and I was like, okay, everyone's taking pictures. I'm like, okay, we're gonna crop my everything, and you got a picture of me. That's what I on social media. I'm like that's. Now you that's just got back from job. holiday, but we know with real estate agents, <clears> the work is never done. So how much were you on your phone? still working while you were down there. You know, I did have a closing that got extended, which normally doesn't happen here. It's usually a 30 day close. Um, but I did get word that it is being extended. Um, we have a VA buyer, which is a veteran buyer and there's something going on there. So it's going to just be extended, uh, for a week, which is okay because my Canadian sellers are actually going to stay in the house a month longer anyways for free so that they can enjoy their home for another oh, month before nice. they head back to Canada. So it kind of worked out. So no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, and then it'll be even warmer temperatures when they come back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's, we've had snow in June in Edmonton, right? Sometimes. Oh yeah. Every, yeah. every yeah. month, historically, every month we've had snow sometime. But, yeah. Uh, I remember in July? Uh, August, it was the August long weekend and there was a big outdoor concert and on the ticket, it said it was going to go rain, sleet, hail, <laughs> was going no matter what the weather was. And then it snowed all weekend on the August oh long weekend. Gosh. So they had to shut the concert down. That wasn't Jeez. part of the weather conditions. I remember that one. And there was uh, a lot of guys made a lot of money um, with winches on the front of their trucks because they were <laughs> winching out the trailers that couldn't get wow. out. Of yeah. Yeah. People that got stuck. Yeah. yeah. That's too bad. The nasty I, ones, the, for the, the nice ones were doing it for free, but there was a few guys that yeah. charged. Making money. Price gouging, right? Yeah, right. Um, well, we don't have that problem here. Like I told my friend, Laura, um, you know, when you go home after vacation, you, you have those post-vacation blues when you go back to gray skies. Yeah. You, and even in the summertime, you know, in Edmonton, we have 
you know, we can have beautiful summers and sometimes it can be a crapshoot. Um, but you know, that anxiety you feel like in summer when it's sunny out and you are inside, you have that anxiety, like, Oh my gosh, I'm wasting the sunshine. I got to get out. I got to get out. We don't have that here. Yeah. And oh. it's a hundred times that when you have kids, it's like, get out of the house. Right, it's actually right, nice right. out. The sun's yeah. shining and you're not getting bitten by mosquitoes. That was, go, go, that was go. actually, that's one of still to this day, one of my favorite stories about ages ago when we were down in Phoenix <laughs> in june and i think that's when tracy burnt the, 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 the oh, scalp just... of her head because we were driving around in that <laughs> convertible mustang right on the part right for, there. and you were touring us around phoenix all, all afternoon and she sat in the back and anyways but anyway so it was the day we were, the day we were leaving <clears throat> and uh and it's a sunday afternoon of course it's 36 degrees outside and um the the, the guy you were dating um at the time was uh he was that uh he played that arena football and I just remember, uh, I, I was just like, you know, we should be outside. We should be outside. Like, oh my gosh, like we're leaving, you know, 30 plus degree weather and right. it's crappy at home and all that stuff. And I just remember saying to you too, because he was watching the, the finals or something like that of, of, of the game. And I said, but well, shouldn't we be outside? And he goes, why? It's going to be 35, it's going to be like 100 degrees tomorrow and 100 degrees the next day and 100 degrees after that. I was like, you suck, buddy. That's why, and that's why I broke up with him because he talked like that. I like yeah. that invitation. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So why we're not a couple anymore. <laughs> Just wants to hang lay on the couch all day. Good, good invitation. Yeah. <laughs> right. So right. even more reason for people to invest in Arizona, but that's right. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um <laughs> so one of the difference Devin and I were talking last week and Tracy, um, in Edmonton, when you go to buy a house, you uh, a pre-approval is optional. Yeah, optional. Highly recommended. It's mm -hmm. and it's and I know you're going to get into this in a minute. It's you know where it's it's man mandatory. I mean, it's really um, it's 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 highly recommended, and a lot of real estate agents in Alberta will you know not necessarily even want to go out and 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 start showing properties to uh, a buyer until they are pre-approved because you can get into that whole situation of, you know, they fall in love with the property and then, and then having to rush to get everything done. So, uh, I do know that there are some agents that will even say, you know, I can't show you any properties until you're pre-approved. Um, it's not that rigid, but ultimately it, it does come into a situation where it's, it's kind of a waste of time for mm -hmm. the buyer and for the realtor to be out looking at properties. Others will basically say, you know what, I'll take you out on maybe a couple, but, and that's an opportunity, especially if it's like a realtor.ca lead or something like that, just to say, Hey, you know, if the person's like, I just want to go look at properties. Okay. Well, let's go look at a couple, but then let's have a meeting afterwards and, you know, go to a Tim Hortons or something and let's go through the process and basically say, look, you have to get pre-approved because um, it's, it's just, again, simply a, a waste of time otherwise. So, mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we are in Alberta. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And down here, this is my uh, Mexico post Mexico voice happening right now. Um, <clears throat> I swear I didn't have that much tequila. I don't know what happened here. Um, here it's definitely mandatory. You cannot uh, submit an offer without a pre qualification. And down here we look at it. You you get a lot of the because I know at home when you write a contract you kind of figure the financing out after here we have the financing figured out before so your first meeting is with a lender or a loan officer and they do the credit check they look at your pay stubs and this we have a pre-approval form that everything is checked off have has their pay stubs been checked has their credit reports been pulled have their tax returns been looked over i mean that's how deep we go wow. so when you submit an offer and especially in a competitive market here where we're in a seller huge seller's market we have low inventory here um that is an advantage because you know, a seller can see, well, how we want to make sure this closes. We want to make sure you're going to get the money to purchase this home. So, uh, you know, uh, the more that these boxes are checked, the lenders already looked into and, and some already go through the underwriting process. So they're, you know, they're that approved. Um, awesome. so here it has to be attached to the contract. So we will not take anyone out without a proof of funds. Like let's say a lot of Canadians buy cash. So yeah. we have to see the documents where we have to submit proof of funds where the accounts with the names on it, uh, showing the balances. And we have to prove that to a seller. Like, look, we can get this house. Cause our closes are 30 days and Edmonton there, how long from accepted contract to when you get the keys in the yeah. buyer's hands. 
pretty much uh, um, it, it can be any any time. That's another thing as well. It's a flexibility thing. And I, I think just coming back to the pre-approval, we're, we are seeing a shift. Again, it's not mandatory, but we are, since we got into this, this you know, hopefully long seller's market, but certainly many in, in the fact that it's only been a couple of months um, where there's a lot more multiple bids. And, and so uh, one of the things that the listing agent will basically say to, to help the, the, the seller make the decision is, you know, is this offer coming with a pre-approval? And if it's not, well, then they might actually step over it um, for one that might be a little bit less because of the fact that they know that they're pre-approved because they obviously don't want to see a, a deal or and watch all those other buyers leave and go somewhere else if ultimately that deal dies. Um, when it comes to closing, that is flexible. Um, if it's a cash deal, we can have it closed in as little as five days. Um, um, beyond that, it's it's uh, usually three or four weeks. That's really what uh, the lawyers are asking for. And sometimes we'll have closings that might be 60, 90 days. Um, it's all basically what's what's uh, agreeable to the to the buyer and the seller. Ours is a standard 30 days, and we actually don't use lawyers here. Uh, we use title companies. And uh, an escrow officer is kind of like a paralegal to compare it. So they collect all the monies, they hold on to it, they figure out HOA dues, which in Canada we call them strata or do we call them strata fees in Edmonton? The HOA uh, we fees? Do have, we've got uh, strata fees are more of a, a BC term, it's mm -hmm. con condo fees here in Alberta, but we do. Yay, have Vancouver. Yeah, we do have some we do have some homeowner association fees, but not not very many. OK, so here pretty much every property has them. So they kind of and they also um, formulate the taxes owed because we we pay our taxes after um, rather than before. So they they formulate that and, and figure all of those um, fees and funds out. And the title company does that. So we don't actually use lawyers. The only time we we'll use a lawyer is if somebody is signing in Canada, then uh, Canada doesn't have mobile notaries, so they'll use a, um, a barrister. I'm like, who's a barrister? I guess in Ontario, they use barristers. Um, but you have to use a lawyer to be able to sign your documents and stuff. Yeah, actually, if you're we, purchasing here. I, you know, it's funny you see barristers <clears throat> in, uh, in, Albert, in, in Canada, and I can't remember which is which, but um, you see barristers and solicitors. And I believe solicitors are the ones that go to court. And oh, interesting. And barristers are the ones that, that just do the paperwork. Kind of. Thing. I just showed you how uneducated I am. But anyway. <laughs> hey, we just found <laughs> a lawyer is a lawyer. Yeah, we found that out a month ago, I think, oh, <laughs> from, okay, okay. from talking to uh, our real estate lawyer <clears throat> yeah. who talked about, uh, you the know, difference. barristers and solicitors. And it, oh, and interesting, barristers. interesting, yeah. fabulous. Right. So yeah, and a lot of people find the the um, lending process here in the prequel process. A lot of people kind of uh, feel that they're being interrogated a little bit. Um, since the market crashed here and we crashed, you know, in 07, 08, 09 uh, because of predatory lending. So the federal government has really clamped down on, on uh, that. So there's a lot more questions and it's standard. Like your lender is not picking on you. This is what I tell my clients. Everybody has to do this. It's not a lender thinking that you're, you can't afford it or anything else. I mean, and you know, lenders say, oh, it's an easy process. I mean, be prepared. It is you are going to show 10 pages of bank statements. If, if one statement has a blank, two blank pages on the end, you have to include that. Um, you know, and it's, it's cash, uh, definitely a lot easier, but one point you were going to say you can close as little four days or in Edmonton, are you having inspection periods in that four days with investors that are paying cash? Uh, yes. Now that's going to be really difficult when things are busy. Like right now, it would be mm -hmm. next to impossible. But uh, when things were slower, uh, December, even in early January, um, and you talk to in inspectors and, and they're, they're, they've got lots of availability, you would probably see. Um, um, and I, I should qualify that actually when you're talking about closing. So we've got that would be five days after the conditions are removed. So you might you might say, hey, I'm paying cash, but I do want a property inspection. So uh, let's say the um, the um, you know let's say five days and five days. So let's say in a, a, a proper a, a transaction is agreed upon today. So mm -hmm. this is Thursday. So let's say um, condition removal on that property inspection is going to be by next Wednesday. So by next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Sometime between now and it could be even be on the weekends because a lot of um, inspectors work on the weekends. They would have that property inspection. Then, when we, you know, agreed upon whatever needed to be done from the inspection, and that condition was waived, we would then have another five days 
of, of um, what we would call the closing period to, to have possession. So when I say five closing days, if there's an inspection, um, that would basically be um, after the property inspection. But um, you can, again, if you're see, seeing a cash buy and there is no property inspection and no financing, yes, you could close and have that done as, in as little as five days. Okay. So that's interesting because we use different voc- we use different vernacular in real estate here. So we don't talk about conditions. Like our inspection period is the due diligence period. And okay. that's what it's called. Oh, nice. So yeah, we don't remove conditions. I'm like, what condition? I, you know, have ADD, <laughs> but that's going to stay I forever. Conditions in my hair this morning. Yes, exactly. So yeah, we have an inspection period, which is 10 days. So our total close from when the contract, and we call it close of escrow. Uh, is the day that the property officially transfers from one seller to the new buyer. But if it's in escrow, our escrows are 30 days. So that's once the contract is accepted, the next day is day one and it's all done in 30 days. Oh, wow. Yeah, appraisal as well. Yeah, no, there's definitely some flexibility in terms of you, you kind of mm-hmm. decide on, you know, well, you know, how, how, how long do we do we want this conditional period to be? Um, you, you can anything beyond, say, 10 business days on a condition um, sellers and uh, listing agents get a little bit concerned. Sometimes I'll go um, and funny, I, you know, I, I get a laugh from the listing agent when I do this. Sometimes I might put. Um, you know, 13 conditional days and they say, why so long? And I say, cause I, I, you know, I have a feeling we're going to be in negotiations for three or four days. And by the time we agree on this, we're going to only be eight business days out um, God, yeah. from, from the conditional period, but, but it's completely flexible. It's interesting when you've got mm-hmm. such a set period of time, um, you know, there is, there is sometimes we'll get direction from the, the financing people. Um, you know, the lender will reach out and say, Hey, you know what, we're going to need a, a good 10 days because we're, we're backlogged because, um, there is, you know, when we've got pre-approval, um, and I explain this to buyers a lot, you, you there's basically two processes of getting, uh, pre-approved. The first one is for you, which we also have a length, lengthy list of things that your banker or your mortgage broker will want. And then the second period is, is they want to make sure that you're not overpaying for the property. So, so you're already good. You know, if you were approved for say $400,000, we're going to find a house that's $400,000 or less, but now they want to go out and make sure you're not uh, buying a $320,000 house for 390. And they say, Holy smokes, this thing is, you know, and I'm talking in extremes here, but 40 or $50,000 over that hardly ever happens in a buyer's market. But when we are starting to see some properties now, in Edmonton, and this is big money here in Edmonton, uh, thirty or forty thousand dollars over list. The appraisers want to go out and make sure that you're not overpaying for that for that property. And and what happens is that if let's say you're buying a house for four hundred thousand dollars, and the appraiser comes back and says it's only worth three ninety, that buyer has to come up with an additional ten thousand dollars to make up the difference of the shortfall that the uh, the lender is prepared to to pay for that or, or lend for that house. So do you guys call it the appraisal period or it's, we call it the conditional period because, because it's, it's uh, so, you know, um, and even from the term, like some people don't, they, they go, what do you mean a house is pending? What does that mean? And we'll say, well, it's conditionally sold. Okay. Conditionally sold because we're working on satisfying or waiving conditions and the conditions could be um, anything uh, most and 90% of the time it's financing and property inspection. If it's a condominium, then there's also the review of condo docs. Um, I've got some investors that basically will say upon review and approval of my lawyer, um, uh, there, there could be a sale of buyer property is another popular one. Obviously, if somebody has got to sell their current house, um, you can have any, any, um, any condition possible. If you want, um, conditions get put in for backup offers. Um, that's a condition as well that, you know, if, if, uh, you know, the first deal dies, that um, you will consider our offer next. Um, so we call that a backup offer. Well, that's a and backup call- offer for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, I forget what term you used, but when you say uh, sold with conditions, we our term is under contract. So if it's under contract or pending, yeah. um, we say that, well, we never actually say it's pending. We list it as pending, but we yeah. will, we say yeah. it's under contract. So under contract means- say that too. That's, that's oh, okay. Funny, I, I, you know, funny enough, we actually, there's- several terms like i probably the one that has the most is is um the day that the the keys are exchanged we there's completion day closing day possession day key release day 
I, there's there's all sorts of they all mean the same thing and so oh, okay you have, you have to be up to speed because depending on the realtor um and the lenders and the lawyers they all you know i find that most lawyers in alberta use uh it they call it completion day meaning that the, the transaction is completed oh. um i use key release day to my buyers because that's what they get it's like what's the day i get the keys okay <laughs> sure, well, sure. key release day that you get the keys is this day yeah, yeah. And we, we call that close when we close, close of yeah. escrow. That's how okay. it's referred to here. Yeah. We like to keep it simple. We don't confuse yes, it. I know. <laughs> we're, you know, we're... Well, and Diane, with you bringing up close, we are getting uh, to the time on the video where we should start to wrap it up. Yes. What? So... This is like so short, it feels <laughs> like. I could just it's, jog all day. It's, it's gold. <laughs> this is amazing information. So I hate to step in on this, but um, yeah. Uh, for Every party has a one. pooper. Every, I, know. I know. I get to be the pooper. Yeah. I get to be your pooper today. <laughs> but luckily we're here all week. If you right. like no more. <laughs> and next week. But I know you guys, um, there's so much more you guys could talk forever about this. So I just wanted to see if you guys had a couple more things you wanted to throw in well, before we. Yeah, well, I, I would just basically, so the, the purpose of these is ultimately to help people um, in Canada that are either looking to um, um, buy in the Phoenix area or to sell. Um, to just give them uh, uh, some information in regards to that process and also uh, have a contact that they can reach out to with Diane being down there for mm -hmm. the last 20 years and been a realtor for over 10 years and specializes with Canadians and uh, and it's interesting you mentioned that Diane about how the person that you were helping when you were in Puerto Vallarta uh, you were helping a, a Canadian sell their house. Yeah, a Canadian seller. Absolutely. It's yeah. a little bit different with FERPTA and taxes and stuff. You have to file here in Arizona as well as in Canada. So there's a little bit of, you want to use someone who kind of knows that. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to continue to do over the, the you know, every time we chat is uh, just all the subtle differences. This one was uh, interesting in the fact that it started off with, you know, pre-approval and, and the differences there and, and, and definitely mm -hmm. realized there's a lot of differences in terminology um, which we bump into all the time with a lot of bc investors um, that are buying in alberta we we come into mm -hmm. all sorts of different challenges there as well um, sure and so but anyways uh, just just wanted to uh have you uh, mentioned again in regards to some of the services that you provide for canadians that are looking to buy or sell in the phoenix area Oh, absolutely. So we can get them with a great accountants here to help them deal with FERPTA, which is the Foreign Investor uh, Real Property Tax Act. Um, and also with accountants in Canada as well. Uh, if you can't make it down here, I know with COVID, a lot of my clients couldn't. So I will actually pack up your stuff and ship it to you. Uh, pack it and ship it the cost of shipping probably not but uh also help with cleaning staging absolutely everything that that you need uh done to get your home ready i'm happy to help professional photos awesome. as well as um really great guidance all the way through so it's great with technology and facetime you know you don't have to be down here you can sign all your documents in canada no problem so it can be easy peasy yeah and again, and again i love and i think it bears repeating every time we talk about how um, the Canadian banks really got on board with understanding how many Canadians are buying in the Sun Belts of the U.S. because they're down there now. So mm -hmm. it's it's certainly a lot easier from a lending standpoint to make a purchase. Yes, uh, absolutely. So yeah. BMO offers a program for Canadians purchasing as well as RBC. So yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Okay. Cash is always king though here. I just think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, the American way. <laughs> yeah, it's America. America. Yeah. Show your cash. Well, this is great yeah. information for anybody who's just curious about the difference yeah. between uh, buying or selling in the in the Canadian yeah. or the American market, seeing yeah. the, the differences. And then especially for anyone that is looking at buying down in yeah. the States and how, or Canada. How do they get a hold of you, Diane? Uh, my phone number is 602-620-2277. Uh, my email, I guess the easiest one to remember since we're just uh, saying this on video is can't remember her email at gmail. <laughs> I, what was it again? I, 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 I can't wow, can't remember it's already, her email. It's already gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Right? That's Isn't the, it? Yeah. So when I, was in, when I was in Puerto Vallarta and everything, so a lot of times you don't have your business cards. You're in a bathing suit, you're in the ocean, you're talking real estate. So I said, okay, here's my email. Can't remember her email at gmail.com. Yeah. I'll show you the book that I just got done. I'll, I'll edit this out for family viewing or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. 
<laughs> so that I can keep everything in there. So now I'll write down your email in there yeah, in case perfect. I can remember it. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And you can always reach me through social media too. It's Diane yeah. Brennan and at my realtor, Diane Brennan on Instagram. Who else am I on? Don't check my TikTok. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Are there frozen videos of you on it? Yeah, more frozen videos. <laughs> okay. sure. And Devin, what's your contact information? Yeah, so uh, uh, the company I work with, uh, we're an investor focused, but we also like to help people um, in any way we can. Um, and that would include helping people uh, get connected with Diane uh, down in the States. But I'm with EXP Realty and the Mogul Realty Group. And my cell number is uh, 780-951-9279. I don't have a, a snazzy email. It's kind of boring, but uh, it's Devin, <laughs> D-E-V-I-N at mogulrg.com. But man, I'm going to have to look at coming yeah, up Yeah, like we forgot that it. one already. Yeah. We've <laughs> won like Diane's. <laughs> yeah. If you can't remember my email, <laughs> can't email remember, me. And I'll, can't uh, remember yeah, her I'll... email at gmail.com. <laughs> That's awesome. No, your website will be, I can't yeah. remember my website. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. What's his name oh, again? Awesome. Dot com. <laughs> What's his name? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Well, you look great, Diane. Obviously, well, I had a vacation. I had an excellent vacation. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to go take a nap after the margaritas, but. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys take care. We'll talk to you next week. Same time, same place. Sounds great. Okay. All, right. All right. Bye-bye.